compost, banana peels, peanut butter, liquid fertilizer, and why am I holding my lucky egg? Well, welcome back to the Mind and Soil Test Garden, and in today's video, we're gonna start potting up our tomatoes not only into larger seed cells, but also testing five different fertilizers to see how big of a difference it makes on overall growth. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna cut every single one of the plants down to the soil level so we can see how much plant matter developed in each environment. So to begin diving in, let's set up our environments, starting with environment number one, which are three inch seed cells. So all I'm doing here is filling up these three inch seed cells to about a centimeter from the top. And then we'll make a little hole right in the middle for where I'm gonna transplant the tomato seedling into. And I'm gonna plant these a little bit deep here so that a good amount of the stem is buried because it will begin developing roots as well. Now with the tomatoes in, all that I need to do is fill it up the rest of the way with worm casting seedling mix, gently compact it here as well, and then we'll give them a nice watering before I place them under the grow lights. Okay, environment one, let's put it to the side for just a minute, and for environment number two, we're going to go with six inch seed cells. Everything else is going to stay the exact same, but now we're doubling the size of the environment it's going to be growing in. So same thing, I'm gonna be filling it up with worm casting seedling mix, compact it just a little bit, then dig a little hole right in the middle for where I can transplant my seedling into and then I'm just gonna fill up the rest of the way with worm casting seedling mix. Moving on to environment number three, we're gonna go with a new blend that I've been experimenting with, and that's 66% pro mix and 33% organic compost. So the big difference between environment two and three is that this one does not include any worm castings. I wanna see if it grows better or worse, and I'm curious about this because I have a suspicion that we already have enough organic matter and microbial life coming from the compost that we might actually not be getting too much benefit by putting the extra worm castings in there. Okay, let's get these now put to the side and move on to environment number four, which is gonna be the same mix as environment three, but now with some 444 fertilizer. So I filled them up about two thirds of the way with that new blend of two thirds pro mix, one third organic compost. And then I dug my little hole right in the middle. Then we'll grab half a tablespoon of 444 and sprinkle that into where I'm transplanting the tomato. So our first environment with an actual fertilizer in it is now set. Let's move on to environment number one, two, three, four. Environment number five, we're going the same mixture, but now with a liquid fertilizer. So now rather than watering with just regular water, we're gonna do that with the liquid fertilizer here. And I'm probably gonna do about three turkey base on each one of these. And for reference, this is the Fox Farm Grow Big Liquid Plant Food. It's a 644 liquid fertilizer. And while it does look blue, it is organic based. Now let's put environment five down to the side here. Now time for our sixth and final environment. I'm so excited for this one because we're going with the same seedling mix, but with a homemade liquid fertilizer. So this is totally experimental, but I know that I wanna have all my macronutrients in there. So I grabbed a whole bunch of coffee grounds because they're high in nitrogen and added those into a pail. Then when researching for this, I found out that peanut butter is actually fairly high in phosphorus. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of peanut butter. And then for potassium, we're gonna go of course with bananas. I had a couple of frozen ones in the freezer, so I'm gonna throw both of these in. And then I also have a whole bunch of eggshells on hand. So I'm gonna blend all these eggshells up and add them in because they should be nice and high in calcium. And lastly, I'm also gonna add one cup of compost just to get a little bit of microbial life, bacteria and enzymes in there. Then I filled the pail up with water and I let this sit in my seed starting area where it's nice and warm for 24 hours. That way things can begin to break down, marinate, potentially turn into a good fertilizer. And last thing I'm doing from there is simply draining it with some cheesecloth. So I'm only getting the nice liquid fertilizer. And now we're gonna utilize this the exact same way as the other fertilizer. So three turkey base going into each one of these seedlings. I've got no, literally no idea what to expect with this one. I could see them going completely yellow and being angry or maybe they'll put on tons of growth. So no idea what to expect here. All right, all six environments are all set. Last thing I'm doing today is just giving the ones that didn't receive liquid fertilizer a nice big drink of water to help them settle into their new homes and then place them underneath the grow lights to begin this experiment. So seedlings are underneath the grow lights. 
My prediction is that environment number five, the one that received the liquid fertilizer from Fox Farm is going to be our winner, but only one way to find out. Let's fast forward to see the growth results. Okay, it has been five weeks since that last update. And as you can see, we've got a lot of growth. So give me a minute while I pull these out and we begin the final check-in. Like I said, these have grown unbelievably well. Only five weeks since we potted them up and they are absolutely taking off. So in today's update, we're gonna go through each environment to see which fertilizer performed best. And then at the very end, what I'm actually gonna do is cut every single one of them down to the soil level. And then we're gonna weigh the amount of plant matter to see which one created the most plant matter. So to begin diving in, let's take a look at environment number one, which were the three inch seed cells. So here we have the three tomatoes that were transplanted into the three inch seed cells. And then I also actually kept three of the tomatoes in the smaller one inch plugs, did not pot them up at all. And as you can see, we have put on some growth here, but they are clearly way behind the ones that we potted up into the six inch seed cells. And there's two takeaways that I want you to get from this. The first one is that I was barely able to keep these tomato plants alive. And the reason why is because as these tomato plants grow, their root system gets larger and larger within these small confined seed cells. It starts needing to drink more and more water in order to continue growing. And what that results in is the seedling mix drying up really, really quickly. So these plants went through way more stress because I could barely keep up with how frequently they needed to be watered. And the second piece is that because these are such small seed cells, they are all ending up completely root bound. They simply don't have enough space to put on the growth that they're clearly trying to as we see in all the other environments. So if you do grow tomatoes this season, I really encourage you to pot them up into a six inch seed cell and to do so when they're around day 21, day 24, anywhere in there. Speaking of that, let's move on to environment number two, which is the exact same seedling mix. The only difference is it's a six inch seed cell. And so as we can see here, clearly way more growth Growth on these babies and again it's the exact same seedling mix no additional fertilizer has been added the only variable that has changed is that it's now in a larger seed cell and to be honest these are growing exactly how you'd want tomatoes to be growing at this point in the season they're looking really green really lush there's new leaves every three to four inches and down at the bottom, we can see the first suckers beginning to emerge. But of course, we wanna begin figuring out how big of a difference do the different fertilizers have on the plants. So let's move on to environment number three, where I'm trying my new seedling mix, which is 66% pro mix and 33% compost. And just like environment two, these are way outgrowing the three inch seed cells. And what I would say is that they're actually at a very, very similar place to environment number two. And again, the key difference between those two environments is that this environment does not have any worm castings. And that's been a bit of a curiosity of mine. If having something like 33% compost is actually providing all the nutrition, all the microbial life, all the bacteria and enzymes that our tomatoes and other plants need to thrive. And so we'll see if there's any difference in weight between the two of them when we pop them onto the scales in just a couple minutes. But at first glance, I think they're in a very similar position. Now, what happens when we add some fertilizer into it? Well, let's move on to environment number four, which is the same blend of 66% pro mix, 33% compost, and 444 organic fertilizer. And so of course, these also growing incredibly well, super healthy, super happy. And as a matter of fact, I'm even starting to see the first tomato flowers up at the top of the plant. Now, in terms of overall growth, at first glance, I would say that these are a little bit ahead of environment two and three. And on top of that, it looks to me like the the stems are a little bit thicker than those earlier environments as well. But we're gonna figure that part out when we actually get them on the scale because that's gonna make it really clear as to whether or not there's more plant matter that's been developed in there. But let's now move on to the next environment. I believe that is environment number one, two, three, four, five. Yes, where we utilized a liquid fertilizer. And guys, this one is user error on my behalf. So a couple of weeks ago when I was filming the DIY bottom watering station, I was doing it all in the garage and it's the middle of winter so it was freezing cold in there so I had a space heater running and without even thinking I put these tomato plants basically right in front of it and within not more than 10 or 15 minutes two of them pretty much completely shriveled up. So these ones will get a DNF did not finish in this experiment but that's fully on my shoulders 
and I'm again really, really intrigued and interested in liquid fertilizers. I've seen some really good initial results with them, so I'm definitely gonna continue experimenting with them. Now let's move on to our final environment, and that is the DIY liquid fertilizer. And as we can see here, really nice growth on these plants as well. What I would say though, is that they certainly seem a little bit smaller than a couple of the environments, specifically that one that received the 444 organic fertilizer. And so the biggest thing that stood out to me so far is that there isn't one environment that's massively outperformed all the other ones. And I think that's probably due to the fact that there was so much compost in the seedling mix that I was planting them into. So they were probably already getting the vast majority of the nutrients that they need. I'd be really curious to see what would happen if there was not any compost in these different environments and I might do that as a follow-up experiment. But the last thing that I want to do today is actually go a step further and so it is the middle of the winter time right now. I cannot plant these out into the garden right now so what I'm going to do is chop each one of them down to the soil level and then pop all of that plant matter onto a scale so we can see what the difference is in terms of the actual plant matter weight. So to begin diving into that, let's get started with environment number one. I hope that I got all the shots that I need because once I start cutting these down, there ain't no going back. But let's begin diving into it with those that I did not pot up whatsoever. All right. And I've got my scale already all zeroed out. So pop them in there. And that comes out to 0 0.008 kilograms or eight grams. Now moving on to environment number one, the three inch seed cells. Time to say goodbye. Thank you for your service. Let's pop you on here. So environment number one comes out to a reading of 37 grams. Moving on to environment number two, the six inch seed cells. You won't be able to see me for a minute. And again, everything else in this environment is the exact same. No additional fertilizer, just a bigger seed cell. Here we go. All right, environment number two is all the way up to 141 grams. So as hard as it is to cut these down, I'm loving this because it's making it so clear how much more growth we're seeing when we're potting up to a larger environment. Now let's start getting into what difference the different fertilizers had on our overall growth. Moving on to environment number three, 66% ProMix and 33% compost. And I'm guessing that this one's gonna be even a little bit higher, but we'll see in just a second. Here we go, chop these off. Don't want anything falling over the edge, nothing like that, okay. We are now up to 161 grams, so another increase there. Now environment number four is the 66% Pro Mix and 33% compost plus 444 organic fertilizer. And I'm saving that one for the very end because I think it's going to be the biggest. So let's move on to environment number five, the liquid fertilizer. And again, this is the one that I ruined. So we're gonna give it a DNF on the board, but I wanna get the weight on there nonetheless. It's gonna have another chance at some point, that's for sure. I'm really excited about playing around more with liquid fertilizers. Okay, so this one, it's at 90 grams, but again, on the graph, I'm gonna put it as did not finish user error on my behalf. Let's move on to environment number six, the homemade DIY fertilizer. All right, and as I cut this one down, I don't think it's gonna be the biggest growth. It's done well, but the bigger thing is it smelled so bad. So even if it was the winter, like I'm glad in some ways that it's not the winter because uh, it was absolutely awful smelling in the garage there. All right, let's start chopping it up and get it on the scale here. Okay, so we're ending up at 168 grams. So it actually is our new leader. So that actually, a little bit surprising to me, is our new leader with only the fourth environment remaining. Whew. All right, let's get into environment number four and see if it is our winner. Now, just before we cut this one down, get it onto the scale. If you're enjoying this gardening experiment video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel here. I've got new gardening experiment videos coming out every single week. So it's gonna be a really, really fun season, tons of learnings along the way. Now, let's start getting this last one onto the scale. I'm a little bit nervous all of a sudden. Okay. And that comes out to 
181 grams. That is our winner, a little bit ahead of that DIY liquid fertilizer. So without a doubt, the two biggest takeaways for me in this experiment are first, 100% pot up into a larger seed cell. Simply by moving from that three inch seed cell up to the six inch seed cell, every other variable the exact same, the total amount of plant matter increased by 281%. So that's a huge amount of growth that you get to unlock just by potting up. And the second big takeaway is to get really good compost into your seedling mix. All the environments that had that compost in it performed super well. And if you wanna get your hands on the exact seedling mix that I utilize to grow all the tomatoes in, as well as the 444 from that highest performing environment, then simply head down to the description of this video where I've left links for all those products. That's everything for today here, folks. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you're notified when my next gardening experiment video launches next weekend. And I'll see you then.